last lesson of this unit. It's a short unit, but you'll find that the two lessons are very much related to each other. And a lot of the stuff we're doing, we've done before. It's just different context. We are going to be going through some homework problems and doing those as our examples because, you know, I can't create them as well as they can, actually. And let's just go straight to the free response question and let's read it, okay? We'll do a couple free response questions, uh, read them, but we're going to focus on just completing one free response question. It says fish, this is the homework that we're looking at. Fish enter a lake at a rate modeled by the function e. Now, we read this word, and that should like, pique our interest. It's a rate. And E is given there. We're told fish leave the lake at a rate modeled by L given there. And it says both E and L are measured in fish per hour. So we're given these rates. Rates are like what we've talked about before, rates of change, fish per hour. It is not how many fish have left or have entered. It is how quickly fish are uh, leaving and how quickly fish are entering. Let's look at the next problem. People enter a line for an escalator at a rate modeled by the function r, where r is measured in people per second. r of, say, 50 is not going to be how many people are in line. It is the rate at which people are entering the line. It's how quickly people are joining the line. Okay, so rates. And then we get to the problem that we're going to focus on. Question? The the rate at which people are entering. That's how quickly people are entering at that moment, okay? All right, we're going to focus on this problem. Here we have the rate at which rainwater flows into a drain pipe is modeled by the function R as R of T in cubic feet per hour. T is measured in hours from 0 to 8. The pipe is partially blocked, allowing water to drain out of the other end of the pipe at a rate modeled by D, cubic feet per hour. There are 30 cubic feet of water in the pipe at T equals 0. Part A, we'll get straight to part A, and we'll say what's not the answer. Part A, how many cubic feet of rainwater flow into the pipe during the eight-hour time interval? Okay. Many people think, oh, plug in eight into R, and you're going to get the total amount of water that has flowed in. You would be wrong. Okay, R of 8 would be the rate at which the water is flowing in, it's how quickly the water is flowing in, but it's not the total. Okay, when we think of rates, even though all these letters are like capital, you had capital R, capital D in the problem, we can think of these as derivatives. Rates of change of totals. Just like how we think F prime is the rate of change of f. These are rates of change of the totals. f prime tells us how quickly f is moving up or down. We talk about like slopes of f. These are like the slopes of the totals. Okay? Now, if I want to figure out how much rainwater did flow in and I realize I have a derivative 
of a total, what do you think I need to do to find the total? Ms. Wilson, what do you got? Antiderivatives. We should be thinking about integrals. We want to take an antiderivative of these rates to get totals. What we will find, though, is that we can't find the antiderivative of these expressions. The last one you could, but this R, this G, you can't take the antiderivative of that. So we're not going to be able to go and like take the antiderivative and find C and find an equation that would give me the total amount at a given time. But I can use my calculator, and my calculator can evaluate integrals so long as we have what that we're plugging into our calculator. A range, an interval, okay? What we are going to do is we are going to find the area under these rates. It's the areas under the derivatives, and an area under a rate tells us a total amount over a time interval, or a change over the interval from A to B. It's kind of like how the antiderivative or the integral of f prime, or we could consider the integral of v, gives us the change in x, the displacement. Integrals of the rates will give us a displacement of a total. Integral of f prime would give me the change in f. Okay? Now, what we will find is that we won't just have a rate of change of a total. Notice in all of our problems, we are given two rates. In the problem that we have, we had a rate R, which a rate that water flows in, and then we had another rate, which I think in the problem was D, and it's the rate at which it flows out. So there's not just a situation where I can say, hey, a total amount or like an unknown position an unknown position equals a known position plus a displacement. This is familiar to us. We will say our total amount will equal an initial amount, but since I have two different rates, I'm going to need to find the total that has come in using the rate in and then I'll subtract the total that has gone out. And in this situation, with this random information given to you, this is how it would look. A total at a specific time would equal, all right, make sure we recognize that we have an initial amount of water. Here's our initial amount. So T of zero, which is 10. Plus, and here's the key, the total amount that has flowed in would be an integral of your rate in. R it would be from zero to whatever time you want to find the total amount for. And then I will subtract an integral from zero to T of my rate out, which will give me the total out. We will find we can do this for all of the problems, finding values of the totals, a total amount. And notice, I introduced this. This is new. This is what I created. Like, I'm using it because they've already used capital letters 
for R and for D, they've already used capital letters, so might as well just use a different capital letter. This is created, this represents the total, it equals an initial amount. Typically it's going to be at time zero plus an integral from zero to T of your rate in minus an integral from zero to T of your rate out. Okay, Okay. let's go back to my friend, the, uh, the pipe. I want you to do two things for me. Part A is now a two-part problem. How many cubic feet of rainwater flow into the pipe during the eight-hour time interval? Read that carefully. Okay, let's, let's think about it. How many, feet of cubic, how many cubic feet of rainwater flow into the pipe? Okay. This is a different question than if I ask you, and this is the second part of A, how much water is in the pipe at T equals 8? Those are different questions, and they will have different answers. Please find the answers, discuss with your neighbor, like... What's the difference, and how do we find them? First things first, don't, you're not plugging in 8 into R. You know, that would give you the rate of change of uh, the total in. I want you to tell me how much has flowed in, and then I want you to give me the total amount. Go ahead. You can figure it out. We need to kind of just look at your notes. We just literally wrote down what you needed to do, and you can do it. We are looking for the total in, and we are looking for the total at time 8. The answer to the total in is 76.570. The answer to the total at time 8 is 48.543. See if you can get those numbers. Total in. Oh, I see. I typed in wrong. I think I missed the negative okay. here. Total in. Total, total. Mm -hmm. Please just find it. a lot of stuff to type in. You will find that um, you need to practice typing in this stuff. That way you can get the uh, experience of getting the same decimal that I get. Okay, you got an initial plus a total in, but water is also flowing out. So you also need to subtract your total amount that you are losing. Now, the key pieces of information. If you did not see them, I like to identify them at the beginning. Um, I go ahead and when I'm reading the question, I'm going to label. I'm going to say, all right, R of T, that's my rate in. 
D of T, that is my rate out. 30 cubic feet of water, that is my initial amount. Okay, so for a total in, I need just to have the integral of my rate in. Make sure we are able to type it into our calculators. It's not D at 8. It's not R at 8. It's the integral of our rates to get our totals. Just like we said in our notes. The total at time 8 will be our initial amount plus our displacement. However, the displacement has got two parts. I got a displacement kind of in. And then I get a displacement out. Our initial amount was 30. Our total in, we already found, was 76.570. comes from the integral of our rate in. Our total out, the integral of our rate out. Just like always, when you're finding areas under curves using your calculator, you're not plugging 8 in for T. You're using X's. 0.04x cubed plus 0.4x squared, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Did I do these? It don't take me too long to type it in. I'll, I'll type it in. But literally, 30 plus integral 0 to 8 of this. Don't plug in anything. It's with the t's minus the integral from 0 to 8 of that. Okay? And that's how we got the answer uh, 48.543. Any questions on that? Okay, now we understand how you can find a total amount given rates. Just integrals of rates end up giving us totals, just like integrals of velocity end up giving us displacements of position. Okay, velocity being the derivative of position. All right, well now let's look at part B and part C. Part B and part C talk about is the water, amount of water in the pipe increasing or decreasing? And then when is the amount of water in the pipe a minimum? Pop back to your notes. Here's how we're going to find totals. If we have not, I just keeps jumping around, gotten this through our skulls, please do it now. This is how we'll find a total that has flowed in. This is how we'll find a total that has gone out. Integrals of rates in, integrals of rates out. Okay. Now, in calculus, how do we find when something is increasing or decreasing, how do we find when we have a max or a min? Everybody, please, say it to your neighbor. You're looking at sign analysis of derivatives, right? Right? Not everybody said it over here. So, a derivative is what we need to look at. I need T prime. I need to analyze the signs of T prime. What is T prime equal to? The rate. Look at this. And you guys know this because we talked about the uh, second fundamental theorem of calculus. This is just a number. The derivative of it is zero. The derivative of both of these accumulation functions end up just being the rate in minus the rate out. It 
if T prime is positive, what must be true about the comparison of the rates? More rate in, it's greater than the rate out. Do you need to care about that? You actually don't. We are just going to focus on just rate in minus rate out. T prime's positive means T's increasing. T prime's negative means T's decreasing. Okay, now go back. Is the amount of water in the pipe increasing or decreasing at T equals three hours? You need to find and analyze the signs of T prime. You should write down what it's equal to. You don't have to analyze all the signs right now. For part B, you just need to figure out what T prime of 3 is. Please find that value. It is now that we don't need the integrals. We want to use the rates. The rates are the derivatives. You should get negative 0.313. You should try and get this value yourself. And if you're confused, just ask a neighbor, please. Ask me. I'm here to help. got 32 over 35? I don't think that's right. Oh. Yeah. Yep. Negative 0.313 is what we should get. We don't need integrals anymore. T prime is the derivative of the integrals. This is T. It's this. This is T of T. We want T prime. We want the derivative of this. T prime is just R minus D. It's no longer using an integral. It's the derivative of the integrals. Second fundamental theorem of calculus. Beautiful. We don't want an integral anymore. We're taking the derivatives of the integrals. Look. This is T. Go back to your notes. That's T. I want T prime. I take the derivative of this. This is gone. That's gone. That's gone. It's just rate in minus the rate out. If you have an expression, what you do, it's just 20 sine blank squared over 35, and then that. You would take this and subtract that. I feel like this is an off week in terms of attentiveness in school. Please make sure your neighbor has it. If your neighbor doesn't have it, please help your neighbor. Did you get it? Make sure you subtract everything.
I mean, I see where I messed up. I put uh, 25 instead of 35. All right. It's just uh, it's different. What would be your, what's, what is our answer? Because we haven't answered anything yet. The question is, are we increasing or decreasing and justify? Decreasing, and what's your justification? Sure. Or what's another way that's even easier, referencing what we just did? T prime is negative, right? So T prime is negative. T is decreasing. Could you say the rate out is bigger than the rate in? Yes, you could say that. That would be perfect. Okay, does anybody else need to see uh, that answer and get the answer, negative 0.313? Do we get it over here? No? We're not taking derivatives. We're just plugging in 3, 4, T. Subtracting 3 for D. R of 3, D of 3. It's not R prime, it's not D prime. So plug in 3 in for T and you're going to get it. Get it? Okay. Part C. It's asking us when the amount of water in the pipe is a minimum. Okay. Min for T. We have to do our friend the sign analysis of T prime. We probably should start, and I always start. Okay, T is going to have a min at a relative min where T prime goes from negative to positive or an endpoint. This is usually how I start every single question where I'm asked to find a max or a min. I don't do any analysis, I just get that statement down right away. Then my analysis will lead me to my answer, but I might have to write a little bit more if I don't have to compare all the, uh, all the locations, the endpoints and the relative min. So, T prime, I have to do a sign analysis. Typically, when we're doing this, we set the derivative equal to zero, right? Do you want to try to solve an equation like r minus d by hand set equal to zero? What should you do then for a sign analysis? Graph it. Graph it. Graph y equals zero. See where the signs change. So please graph t prime. t prime is just r minus d. Now we know that we are only focusing on the interval from 0 to 8. I adjust my window to be from 0 to 8. You can change your y's if you want to. You got to be careful typing this stuff in. Okay? At all points. Part of like these rate problems is testing your ability to use a calculator. I love how people use the fraction button. You don't need to use the fraction button. That's R minus all of D. You use parentheses. 
negative 0 0.04. You are attentive to details. You do not make mistakes. You make sure everything is perfect. If you make one mistake, your answer is going to be completely wrong, and you should not get answers wrong because you're not typing things incorrectly. What else did I graph? You need to also graph zeros to quickly find intersections where we cross the x-axis. Boom. I hope we all see that. Do we see that? Okay, please do your sign analysis. Please find what you think is the location of the min. You are not asked to find the value, the total amount. You are just asked to find in this question the time in which the water in the pipe is on a min. And you need your justification as well. This is good if it was a relative min. To confirm that it's an absolute min, you need to reference how it's always negative and it's always positive. Looks good. Doesn't look like mine. Negative 0 0.04x cubed and then square, and then x. Yep. All right. We, second calc, intersect, enter, enter, enter. Get 3.271. That is a time. I noticed that they're negatives, then they're positives. Do I need to check my endpoints? Don't need to check my endpoints at all. I can say, okay, well, T is going down and going up. Uh, T equals 3.271 will be the time of a min because big T prime is negative from zero to this time. And then T prime is positive from this time to eight. This is telling me it's not just changing signs once. I mean, if you just say positive, negative to positive, and you don't give me an interval, then you are leaving an opportunity for there to be another sign change, which maybe you didn't see. This is showing that you've analyzed all of the signs of your interval. Since T prime is negative, we are decreasing. Since T prime is positive, we are increasing strictly on this interval. Boom, we found the min. Okay? Let's move to part D, last part. This seems like a tough question, but after you see the answer, you're going to be like, okay, that makes sense. Let's see. Pipe can hold 50 cubic feet of water before overflowing. For T greater than 8, water continues to flow into and out of the pipe at the given rates until the pipe begins to overflow. Right, but do not solve an equation involving one or more integrals that gives the time W when the pipe will begin to overflow. The tricky part is the T greater than 8. Everybody thinks like, oh, does that change, uh, you know, my starting point? But no, just pretend like it just says, the interval is from zero to whatever, okay? Zero to infinity. You're still using R and D, okay? What do we think? When does the pipe overflow? When the water is greater than 50, okay? So when the total equals 50, we're going to start to overflow. Okay, here is an expression for my total. When the total
when the total equals 50, I need to find the time when the right side equals 50. Well, what goes up here? No, nope. W. They want W. Does this make sense? For our total to equal 50, try to find the time. This is what we would do. Now, let's say I ask you to actually try to answer this question. One thing you will find, and please never ever do this in this class, never try to graph an integral, okay? It takes forever, and if you're doing that, you're doing something wrong. A lot of students will, will be asked, like, how to find a max, and they give their calculator, and they're like, oh, I'm just going to graph it and see when it's the most. But don't do that with an integral because it just takes too long. Remember, in calculus, we take derivatives. We set them equal to zero. We analyze signs of derivatives. They help us find maxes and mins of totals. Make sure you do this homework. Your test will be two and a half questions from lesson one and two and a half questions from lesson two. What is that?